for the next 10 minutes, for the next 10 minutes, there's a refinery in the inside of you. There's a refinery in the inside of you. Now stir it up for the next 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes, there's a refinery on the inside of you. Stir it up, stir it up. You're wondering, how do I stir it up? Just pray in the Holy Ghost for the next 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes. Speak it not unto man, but how this in 
the spirit he's speaking for the mistress can you pray can you pray hello can you pray somba katwa abaine let's go pali roba kamina santa ai koma roba da bela sawa somba de pray that new creation realities is a substitute for prayers. One of the greatest mistakes that we made was thinking that once I know who I am in Christ, then it takes the burden off me to pray. You see? Um... 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. It says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? Now, I explained before. See, if you understand this scripture, it will push you more to pray than to relax. I've explained before that the word one here is the same to the exclusion of another. Alright? So, what this means in essence is that the Bible is saying that for those of us who have been joined unto the Lord, the same spirit he has is what we have. Do you understand? Now, let me paint a picture. <clears throat> um, Sister Love, please come. <clears throat> Glory to God. Now, who is, who can wear this a jacket? Oh, okay, okay. Who, who else has a jacket? Okay, please come. Tamara. What, what you're wearing inside is a shirt. Great. Now, so here's what we're going to do. Let's assume that this is black and this is black. And let's assume that they, they bought this jacket from the same manufacturer, Right? If they come to church wearing the same jacket, what would you say? Would you say they are wearing one jacket? No. You would say they are wearing the same jacket. That's not what the Bible is referring to here. 
All right? When you, what you see in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17 is not that the man who is joined to Christ is the same spirit with him. Because if we say the same, it might mean that they are different or they have certain similarities. If we say the same, what we are saying in essence is that there, there is that maybe the manufacturer manufactured in batch. Manufactured a lot. So you have batch number X4 something something, batch number X5, blah, 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 and all of that. So they come to church wearing the same cloth, but they are not wearing one cloth. So let's play a game now. Tamara, take off this jacket. All right? Now, put it on, love it. So what you have as, the, as a believer is this. God did not mass produce his spirit. In the factory of the spirit, there's just one. God did not produce one spirit for Lovett and another for Tamara. Then another for everybody. So it would, have, it would be assumed that God is in a, a business of mass production. So everybody who becomes saved, automatically he has to produce one spirit for him. So what God did when he included you in Christ <laughs> is that the same spirit. Now, what we just did here does not even classify what we just talked about. Are you listening? What we just did here now does not even classify what we just talked about. The spirit of prayer is put upon you right now in the name of Jesus. It will manifest greatly, greatly, greatly upon you. Glory to God. Rene mande si ke beru verua verua ke ni sokretiza brenisa la karuande kai. It won't just be prayer. You will prophesy. You will prophesy. You will prophesy. From henceforth, you will see into the spirit that which is the mind of God, and you will bet it forth upon the earth in the name of Jesus. Para si ke bresko paru anando. Let the waters in you be stirred up. Let them be stirred up. Koro oke bibombo oke berehiko bevenanka brevini kiraki sike brezo sokora telia reniambo rehisakai. Now follow me, follow me. What what you have is not mass production. God did not mass produce His spirit. What God did was he made one Holy Ghost. All right? He made just one Holy Ghost. And everybody who comes into Christ, what you have is the same spirit that Jesus has now. The same spirit he had when he was here on earth. Now, thank you. Rather than this scripture make you jump about and make you become irresponsible, it's supposed to get you bothered. That's one Jesus who had the same spirit you have. When he was here on earth, he healed the sick. He cast out devils. He raised the dead. He turned water to wine. There was a time when there was no boat available for him to travel. He traveled upon the waters. Witches will see him and they begin to scream out. The Bible says the mighty things he did. That the whole scriptures could not contain it. Because if they had documented everything Jesus did, he said the whole world wouldn't have been enough to contain what he did. And he now implicated you and told you, he said, this same work that I do, you will do. And greater works than this. Why? He says, because I go to the Father. Now you need to understand that the reason why he hinged that thing on going to the Father was because the Spirit, oh God, the Holy Ghost will not be poured forth yet until he has ascended to the Father. That's why if you read the Bible, probably the Bible says when Jesus was going up, he said a cloud received him. Every time you see the cloud in the, in the Bible, it's a, a figurative of the Holy Ghost. So it was more or less like the Holy Ghost could not wait for Jesus to leave the earth so that he can come. So that's why when they were, when they were crying that this man is going to go, you know what he told them? He said it's expedient that I go. Because if I don't go, the promise of the Father will not come. 
So when you see a scripture like this, and you are still battling malaria, and you are hearing that the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is what is at work in you, and you are living a natural life, it should get you burdened. We are misplacing the use of new Christian realities. We are misplacing it. We are misplacing it. You, now you hate your head that you are one spirit. You now go and sit down on a beach. Cross your leg. <laughs> but can you see what that spirit in one man produced? Is it the same in you? Is it the same in you? We, we know plenty word. But we forget, like we always say here, the word of God is for doing. It's for doing. Is becoming and doing. Do you even understand that? You know, for those of you who are in what camp, we don't have any camp here. Say what camp? We are not what camp here. We are not prayer camp here. We are the whole council of God camp. All right? We are not what camp, prayer camp. No. The Bible says that the apostles gave themselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. And those guys fasted. Do you understand? They fasted. And that's why if you read the, the writings of Jesus, Jesus did not say when, if you fast. He says when ye fast. Meaning that it is a necessity for you in Christ to fast. He told the, he told the disciples, he says, he says as I'm, I'm still with you now, you will not fast. But there's a time when there's going to come, when the bridegroom will be taken away from you. Then ye shall fast. Do you even understand that? Even the word of God, it takes prayer to understand it. So that you're not sitting on, on hot buns. Sit down. Say, I'm, I'm the word. I'm, and you, you can quote the word, but you can't see the life of the word at work in your life. You should get worried, bro. You should get worried. Paul says, my prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Those guys were reading the word already. But Paul says, I need to pray for you to see what you are studying. If you really see what you are studying, you won't be lazy. You won't be lazy. You won't just be excited. Oh God. We, we, we read stories now. Don't worry. Our lives are living proofs. But let me give you a few stories. A lady was living in a compound. Alright? A compound where a lot of things were happening in the compound. So, one day she came back from video and took her clothes, her undies. You know how on this, when ladies wash it, you put it there, put a towel on top to cover it. So she came back and washed her on this and hung it on a wire and forgot the on this day. Went. You, when you hang your thing and it gets missing, you get worried. Have they carried it to any altar? Or somebody, <laughs> let me tell you the story. She hung it there and left. That night, there was a, a babalawo that was living in that compound. The guy conjured, 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 conjured. Spirit did not come. The guy wanted to do consultation. Tried and tried. Nothing was working. Alas, the cloth was just beside his window. Until he went and met and he had to outsource the charm. He met his fellow colleague and said, I can't, I can't invoke spirit any longer. What is the problem? That one now saw and told him, said, there is someone who hung one on this. On beside your window. It is that thing that is pushing off every foul spirit around. But when was the last time you saw a miracle in your life? I know, I know you have been told that uh, it is not the will of God for you to live by miracles. But everybody you read in the Bible, they lived in miracles. If they didn't do it for themselves, they did it for others. Okay, let's assume now that you, are, you have understood principles enough. So you don't need any miracle any longer. How about those who are around you? Do you understand that if we say everybody should, should grow in the world, some persons will die before they will understand it. So life is like hospital. Some people are in intensive care unit. If you don't administer healing on them immediately, they are gone. 
these scriptures should put you more on your feet. These things you read, it should put you more on your feet. So I have the life. I, 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 what was it? Uh, the life that Jesus has, I have. Do you do the same things he did when he was here on earth? Now, don't get me wrong. It's important to know. All right? And in here, we emphasize a whole lot on right knowledge. But what we are showing you, see, when it comes for time for us to teach the word, we teach the word like that's the only thing. When it's time for us to teach prayer, we teach prayer like that's the only thing. Because spiritual things don't work in isolation. They go hand in hand. So don't be word camp, prayer camp. <laughs> Jesus was not like that. Mark 1 verse 35. Mark 1 verse 35. Orako benaske breta obalia. Mark 1 verse 35. Shora do monseke. Rena feto credizo nambro la bahako peli do zanzele. Rehisha karaba moraha don kaboka. Raske papo rena ketela brante kadiza rahika vavorako makleko pekele dizo preno kapele zasina rumba hakaraka tali prena sese ketalo zozo prato mela kabranto kababele preka pali abrunda kapele sumrato kopo boyeshata ropali ganam suzuke pa paraka taparo kapaka tele preka papa lena sunsa kapara prata bobo shenta kapele tani prate kedu zombre dizo na kapola bronsa kabora kapate lege dizo preta kiti ya keteli ya siza ruta kapomo na sakapomo kante makopia toko pepele teni zozozo pranto koto beke tizo kopa basaza paraka patele kete suze preto koti zozolo mara paranda kaprati kasuza rabina kapele kete suze loto mika poko la kosesa parato moko sakabute pranto kotu ansisuna paraka pele teke tuze ronto kapapale takida paraka papala katamina kapala rapapa mika sonsoka prasa kapele sesosua rato kepele le kotu su sunata para que toniso solo copa ruta capige de le cope amaliko pranta pepe le soa prato copino sonte que pala prata capalas que te baba para camina copranto copele tia le cupa lito copeli do suce palua 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 un toco tu capa panto que mato con bele tica suce prata capele sise marato mina sonta apapapapapa cope cope la baba baba coso coto 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 baba la capa baba baba coso mbike tiki baba 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 Rapa bele ke te ke te le kope mne la brensu ku pa ba la pa la pe mena kape le ke te le ke te ka ya soko rapa pa pa le toa abrasa ta mena kapombo apombo apombo bo konto abras ko po ponda kape la ayambe le kape lo saya abras kapi li asu arua makofendi soko pa katomi na sonta la e kape lo saka abras ka pa pa le marape no sanka balu adu akababu abras ke e brosco pa 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 a branche ke popolo sine a peno ka pa pu a pu a brasco ponde e tomino copelea a yande ka prata ka pa ropa na hiko a kombi ho sata a ye a barra ta mina sante a brasque patale brasca pondo scapale ura capombo sica a ele capa la brasca peleana a yana nana nana a yondo sataya e brasca pala mena la brasque tele capona rosca papa la capoe Moya, Elia Mamia Gabi, Sele Malikuteli, Preti Camina Sika Munale, Pranta Veruka, Yusa Brato Bamino Cobelitina, Ilete, Prene Madigi, Digi, 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 Abra Siki Malubate, Prete Kele Limo Sika, Babale Mahaya, Prato Camena Sai, Abra Sabele Temino Cabole, Abra Scopondo Siconde, Emele Biotela, Brasa Tamena Capa, Abarande Cape. La sana abrasa kabele tamena ebrazanto loto naya abrasa kabele tay abrasa kantika katomina kumbraselia. Why you, you 
you don't want to pray is because you don't yet understand that you can't live life successfully without God. sit down. You can sit down. Yes, sir. The Bible says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. of the series that we are currently undergoing is to turn each and every one of us to a creature of prayer. Every teaching, every message, every sermon has an intention. It's not just for writing or for argument. All right? To be able to show to the world that you've got the knowledge. That's not the reason why God calls you on a Sunday evening where you should be resting for Monday walk. That's not the reason why he's calling you. So the intent of this series is to turn you to a creature of prayer. It's not so much about what prayer does. What prayer does is only a motivation for you. It's actually about you becoming a creature of prayer. Luke 18 verse 1. Luke 18 verse 1. Luke 18 verse 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men, how many times? That men, how many times? Always. That men always. You are looking for the Greek meaning of always, is always. At all times, without season, men ought always to pray. This is Jesus speaking. And he's telling you that the intention of God for you is to always pray. You are the one who feels like prayer is a luxury you can afford to do without. You know, you pray on the days where you are okay, on days where you are not excited, you don't pray. If you treat prayer like oxygen, if you're ever here and you have difficulty in breathing, do you say, uh, well, I can't breathe, let me just stay like that. What do you do? What do you do? You look for a solution immediately. Immediately. The minute you find out that you can't pray again, you look, look that's why we have brethren. Call somebody up. Say, I can't pray. Oh. For three days, I've realized that even 30 minutes prayer, I can't do on my own. The person will say, let's pray together. See, we need to go back to the days where when we see ourselves, we we'll ask ourselves, how many hours have you prayed this week? Yes, I know there were, there were extremes with that. All right? There were extremes with it. But listen, every move of God, the right move of God, always has extremes attached to it. 
So we won't stop the move because they are extremes. We need to go back to those days. When we, these days when we gather together, what we are talking about is the Gucci bag that this person just got, the Louis Vuitton bag that you just got. There used to be days. And those days are back now. In the department, ask people, how many hours have you prayed today? Back in those days, um, our competition was not about the best clothes to wear. Have you seen me those days? We had no regard for dressing. No business whatsoever with dress. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't dress well, all right? Yeah. We had no regard for dressing. Nobody was competing with themselves on how to... It is... Bro, I just prayed six hours old. Just yes, I just prayed six hours. And the person you're talking to just prayed five. I remember I went for a camp meeting with a friend. And we got there and we, we were praying six hours, six hours, just, you know, pray six hours, rest and continue again six hours. And before we came to camp, he had told me that he prayed 12 hours. 12. And I, the highest I'd done prior to that time was eight. So the minute he left camp, I said, I want to stay, stay an extra day. Just give me an extra day. You can go home. And I made sure that, like Usain Bolt, I broke his record. Listen, you know, there are people who do sin for sport. All right? There are people like that. They tell you, ah, you know how many people? That baby, I don't sleep with them. That baby, I don't sleep with them. They have count. Your own should be exercising godliness. That should be your sport. That should be your sport. How do we come to church and nobody is triggered after the things of God? People are comfortable doing the wrong thing. Somebody comes into church prayerless and he goes home, he's comfortable. No! If we make you uncomfortable in spiritual lethargy, we're not helping you. We're not. We're not. As much as we know that God is not after your performance, God loves you regardless. We, we've, teach, we've taught you all that. And we'll still teach it again because it's the truth of God's word. But listen, you are short-circuiting yourself. You are cheating yourself if you stay. And prayer is not, is not something you're longing for. A dear brother sang a song and said, if I don't pray, they don't make mess of me. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, <laughs> and, you know, as usual, believers would wait for people to, you, you, they, you won't do anything, no. you just sit down. Once somebody does something, you will now look for what is wrong in what the person did. And when you want to even correct the person, you don't look for a loving way to do it. Yes, sir. All right? See? Um, have you ever tried telling a, the mother of a child that she's not training her child well in public? Huh? Say a mom, a mom training the child. You not tell the child, you're not training this child well. This thing you are doing, this is not how to do it. It doesn't matter how good your advice is. You are enemy at that point. So let's, let's look at the scripture. You see, I, I wanted to teach very systematic teaching this evening. Because <laughs> I had a very systematic teaching I wanted to do today. But quickly, let's see the effects of prayer. The effects of prayer. Number one, since we're already there, let's start from there. <laughs> this is not how I wrote it in here, but this permit me to say that if you don't pray, pray, if you don't pray, Satan will make mess of you. I don't want to refine it. All right? If you really don't pray, don't worry, I will give you scriptures now. All right? If you don't pray, Satan will do what? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the beloved of the Father. You have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You are, you are the right hand of God the Almighty. If you don't pray, Satan will do what? Okay. Listen, the fact that even right now you have accepted carnal life 
you, you, you you've accepted carnal life and the ability to quote the scripture as all that God has for you is proof to you already that Satan is already making a mess of you. This is not the life Jesus came to die for. The life where everything you have is what the unbelievers can have. There's nothing different. Just that you have money, you smell good, you dress well, and you can speak to them, capo, capo, capo. The one you do once, <laughs> 30 minutes every week. And that 30 minutes is the one we do in church. Say, capo, 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 maka, eke, eke, eke. Luke 22 verse 31 to 32. Luke. Luke. Media. Luke 22, 31 to 32. All right. It says, and the Lord said, <laughs> Simon, Simon. Behold. Meaning, pay attention. He says, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He didn't say God will stop it. Take note. He, listen, Peter was the beloved of Jesus. Do you understand? Jesus loved Peter. Remember, this is Simon, Simon. This revelation that you have, you have given me, the spirit revealed it unto you. This is the same Simon. This was the man who was going to head the church. At least spiritually, not politically. Politically, someone else, someone, someone else was in charge. But this was a guy that was going to head the church in Jerusalem by stature. And Jesus got an intelligence that the devil wants to sift him as wheat. Jesus did not say, because of my love, I will cancel it. See what he said. Verse, the next verse. He says, but I have prayed for you. So all that Jesus could offer was prayer. Jesus saw that Simon was in a mess. And what he could offer was what? Prayer. If Jesus prayed, why will you not pray? Do you know? You know, whilst I was studying this, it dawned on me that even though Jesus prayed, Simon still denied Jesus three times. You see, let me tell you, some of the things you experience in life sometimes, maybe after you saw a revelation that something bad was going to happen, you know, that you were going on, on, on a journey and there was supposed to be an accident. And that in the accident, you saw the accident, everybody died. But now, maybe what you did, what you actually just saw was just accident. You didn't see death in the story. You now traveled and had the accident, but you came out alive. Now you are asking, what was not the essence of the prayer we prayed if the accident still happened? Do you understand that the impact of what Simon went through would have been worse than this if not for prayer? So sometimes what you see physically are the remnants. <laughs> are the remnants of the intention of what devil had in mind. So sometimes it's just God's way of telling you, see what I'm doing for you. If Simon did not pray, if Jesus didn't pray for him, the devil would have done what? Use the word I used. You done what? You have made mess of you. So pray. Pray. When you are happy, pray. When you are sad, pray. When you are hungry, pray. When you are full, pray. When everybody is cheering you on, pray. When, it, when the whole world is against you, pray. Be like Paul. He says, pray without season. Pray non-stop. If the Old Testament temple was a house of prayer, the New Testament temple, which is our body, is the house of prayer. Yes, 
don't just accept titles without understanding the function that the title does. The Old Testament temple was a house of intercession. The New Testament temple also must be the house of intercession. So at every given point in time, as long as you are breathing, pray. Pray. Your emotion does not come into it. Pray. I said number one is that prayer if you don't pray sit down we do what I have three things and then we'll pray number two is that prayer changes you in fact the first thing that prayer does before it changes your situation is that it changes you are you listening? The first responsibility, the first function, the first duty of prayer is to change the man that is praying. That's why I didn't understand years ago. I think I shared this story some weeks ago. How that then when I just came into Christ, you know, I just accepted the life of Christ. And I, I mean, the environment where we grew up in, I, I was telling someone over the weekend, I said, if you grow up in that environment and you don't like prayer, you're not properly discipled. The same thing with this place. If you come here and you don't like prayer, you don't like the word, you're not properly discipled. All right? Your number one sees is be, be spiritually alive. All right? That's your number one sees. Not perfume, not good clothes. All of that is good. But you, you are more beautiful, more handsome, where you are on fire for God, than you wear your sneaker and jean and just bounce out. You don't need to put on suit. You don't need to put on suit. They just see you say, look at this careless boy coming. They put, they, they, they put certain bush against you and as you are coming, they see you from far. But as you are coming, all of a sudden, they are wondering where is, you're, you're just pastor. The Bible says, <laughs> this is Jesus speaking. He says, the wind blow it where it listed. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from, where it's headed. So, so it is with those of us who've got the Holy Ghost on our inside. You can't, you can't live an ordinary life. You have passed that line. No scripture did I ask for now. Said number two, I said prayer changes you. Second Corinthians thirteen verse fourteen. I know we, we shared this one when we were going home, but I want to pick out something very important. It says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the what? Communion of the Holy Ghost. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God. Grace came through Jesus. The law came by Moses. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The law. For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son. It says the communion of the Holy Ghost. The word communion is, is the word koinonos. Koinonos means to share. The sharing. In fact, usually in the Bible, when they want to describe a man having intercourse with a the, with the wife, what they use is the word, you hear the word know, and Adam knew his wife. All right? He knew his wife. It's this word. It's actually the highest form of relationship, of intimacy that there is. And you see, so you hold on to this stuff. Now you realize that you see a man and woman who get married, they didn't look alike. All right? They didn't look alike. The man looked like was Chinese and the woman 
was Jamaica. Two of them looking very far apart. They get married. And 20 years after, when they say they want to do 20 years marriage anniversary, and they snap picture, the man and the woman, and three children. You cannot successfully tell who the child looks like. Has it happened to you before? Huh? Well, you look at you look at the man, look at the wife, look at today. You say that's why today you say the boy looks like the mom. Tomorrow you come again, you look at the child. Yeah, he looks like. Huh? Yes. You know why? Because what is giving birth to at communion is not one man's product. It's a product of the both parties. So if it looks exclusively like one person, sometimes maybe there's a problem. Now, this thing I said now should not result into you requesting for DNA test. You are who your parents says you are. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right? So what the Bible is saying here is that you should have intercourse with the Spirit of God. And every time intercourse is successful, something is given birth to. You see, the Bible, it says that the spirit within us cried what? Abba, Father. The word Abba is another word for my source. All right? So if you say he is Abba unto you, what you're saying is that everything you are comes from him everything you have comes from him that was the reason why when the disciples spent so much time with Jesus they were walking on the street and people saw them and said these people they behave like, like him you know why they had spent so much time intercourse with him so the first use of prayer is becoming And that's why if you find somebody who only prays, prays against things, prays for things, you, you find someone who is praying so much but is not changing so much. So I was sharing a story that when I was growing up, um, staying with my uncle then. So then I used to go for vigil a whole lot, a lot. You know, I mean, I have church members here. I, I literally slept in church Sunday to Sunday and I'm serious even when I was working right I, I have packed some of my clothes kept in church so I go to work from work I come to church stay in church pray over, <laughs> pray over the night when I'm done praying I'm back bit back to work so when the complaints got too much that this guy, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You are not coming to the house. I will now, what I will do is that I will go to church, pray. When I'm done praying, very early in the morning, I will go to the house. If people want to see me, see me. After one hour, I'll just beat. And I, the problem with that is that if I sleep in the house, I'll pack more clothes to leave. So it means that if maybe I took six clothes to church before, if I come to the house now to register that I'm present, it might be after 14 days later before you see me. And I'm very serious. So my life was already like this. And there were no changes in my life. I would tell lies like no man's business. You know. So all of the youthful exuberances. and all, So one of the days, my uncle told me, he said, so if you pray this much, there are some things in your life that should change. So I told us that it got to a point where when they want to punish me, they tell me, don't go to church. You know, I used to like food. And that's the beauty to fellowship. I used to like food. Like, oh boy, eat food anyhow. They, they call me Opuite. Those of you who don't understand Igbo. Opuite is the one that licks the damn part of the pot. So after everybody is done eating, I will eat your own, eat your own, eat your own. Then the last portion usually give it to me because I'm not going to leak the last part of the pot. But I realized
realized that as I gave myself to God, certain appetites began to die naturally. I fast more than I eat. Hmm? Not because anybody told me do this, do this, no. I fast more than I eat. If I eat 14 days, 14 times a year, you can be rest assured that I fasted more than that. It just became natural. See, when God begins you on a journey, he knows where your life is headed, headed so he begins to shape you ahead of time. Yes. Because who has a key? Who has a key here? Physical key. The physical key. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, see this key? If you take out one part, if you fill this place up, this place, you fill this place up, it won't open the car that is meant to open. And usually, so what you find out is that when God begins to shape, shape here, shape here, shape here, you see, he knows where this key is headed. So today he will shape one part. Tomorrow he will shape another. You can be saying, I don't want this part to go. But listen, if you don't yield, you won't become. If, listen, listen. If you don't yield, there's no amount of laying of hands that will be laid on you. You, they'll lay, that, lay hands on you until you have bowed head and nothing will change see that same principle you saw in the Old Testament that obedience is what is better than sacrifice is the truth so when you begin your journey with God you begin to shape listen people will call you names people will call you things eh? tell you are you the only one that is going to heaven listen your journey is unique your journey is unique. There is a hand that has been placed on you that is making you do the things you do that even sometimes you don't understand why you are doing what you are doing. The worst thing that can happen to you is to stop yielding. Because you have realized now that the way your life is headed is not the same with every other person. You know, I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't. So then, once money comes into our hands, we're looking for, you know, we had more joy in giving than in, in receiving. The only reason why we needed to receive was what? Because we needed to give. And of course, we needed to eat. All right. So, it still look good and all of that. But that was all. Say, ah, you are wasting your life. Ya la mo say. You're wasting your life. <laughs> there, was, there I was praying. I was praying. I come I pray, I pray. A girl came. She used to be, you know. She came, looked at me. Like where I was praying. She looked at me. Stood like this, looked at me. <laughs> It happened in church. She came, like, just came. There were two, actually. There were two friends. Came, stood, looked at me, looked at me. <laughs> and just he's, I was praying, I was on the ground. She just came, looked at me. Because, listen, the child you carry will regulate your appetite. Ah. Are you listening? Yes. 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 Paul was writing to the elders. He said, an elders, an elder must not be given to wine. Meaning that every other person can be given to wine. But because of the calling of an elder, that guy, the appetite must be regulated. Samson's mom was pregnant. And whilst everybody was, it was okay for everybody to take certain things, they now gave instruction about, say, don't take this, don't take this, don't take this. It was not general doctrine, but it was his instruction. That's 
why there are certain things that are personal to me. You never hear me teach them. I said, because it's a personal instruction. So if you, if you see me and you start feeling like, ah, I should be doing, find out what your instruction is. Oh. Hey, I'm not, listen, if there's anything God delivered me from years ago, is the need to be like others. I don't have it. I don't. Hmm? I don't. We we're cracking a joke some time ago about one of the things that was trending in church when we were growing up. There were some words, some linguas that, that flew around. Everybody began to use them. I never saw the need. The desire to be like others, you must let it go. Find your path in God and stay there. On another man's journey, you'll be number two. But there's only one you that God has created. And you cannot, listen, fitting into destiny is, it, it comes with a lot of shaping. It's going to shape you. It will shape you. There are certain things you like, it will shape it, it will cut it off. By the time you stay consistent on that work for four years, five years, and you look back, you won't be like the man that started the journey. If you were somebody who, if they slap you, before the, before the hand lambs, you have dropped like five more. <laughs> By the time it's done with you, they will insult you. And you'll be asking yourself, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? It's, there's nothing wrong with you. He's shaping you. You are key in his, you are the key in his hand. And there's a place he's taking you to. That if those shapings don't happen, when you get there, you won't fit. The worst thing that can happen to you is to get to the point of destiny and you don't fit. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. So in order to avoid that, what will he do? He will shape you step by step. That's why I always say, stop being too concerned about prophecy obey God what do you need to know why do you want to know what God will do in seven years if you can't obey your instruction for today why what, what's, what benefit is that to you so what does the Lord want to do for me in seven years listen I've said this before if you don't know what he wants to do in seven years but you know what he wants to do today what he wants you to do tomorrow in seven years, you will arrive at that point even without knowing what it is. So Paul introduces you to what he calls the communion. Where there is an exchange. It's called a sharing. Sharing. The sharing. This is not prayer against things. This is prayer for me. Sometimes you come, you say, God, change my heart. I say, hey, I know, I know there's a scripture, you know. He has changed your heart, but I know what I'm saying. I know. Spiritually, he has given you a new heart. <laughs> but you realize that you hold on to things too much in your heart. You go to the place of prayer. Say, God, he knows what you are praying about. Hello? When I pray personally, all right, my weddings are very straight to the point. It's very straight to the point. You, you know you have anger welling up on the inside of you. The only reason why you have not exploded yet it's because you are in the presence of your helpers. <laughs> so you know that if you explode, the help that you are getting will go. But see, I, I've said this before. As long as you have a proclivity for something, even though you have not exhibited it, pray against that. Hmm? Hmm. Don't wait. You know, like Pastor Pio said, some of us wait, we, we react. You can't live your life on reacting. It is when something bad has happened, you'll not be looking for ways to amend it. Oh, ye brother! When you see a sister, your leg begins to shake. You've not done it yet. But 
that is a reason to go to prayer. Lord, help me. I have a weakness. Nobody has seen it. Oh. They think it is care. You just like to take care of sisters. Say, ah, that brother, he fights for sisters. They don't know he's lost. You just, you just look for a way to spiritualize it in a different way. You know? So now you are the activist for sisters. But what is really in your heart is lost. So he has a ministry for sisters, but you know what is there. <laughs> you have not manifested it yet. Can you pray about it? You go to God. Maybe you are here. All of a sudden, you don't realize you just like married people. And maybe you now have a word. What's the English word? Everything that is insane in the world has a name. Because when it is given a name, it, you, it, makes you, it makes you look relatable. You know? The phobia of hydrophobia. The metophobia. <laughs> Biblephobia. <laughs> You have not manifested it yet. Can you go to God and tell God, please stay and deal with it. That, that time is not the time to be um, using King James English. Oh God, thou knowest. Thou that sittest in heaven. Leave, Baba, leave English. Leave English. That's why when I pray, I don't like anybody to hear what I'm saying. If you hear me, it's tongues you hear. But when I want to say things in English, I will, yeah, come back. I will say it in English gently. Say, Lord, you hear me? Lord! I'll say, because, you see, that prayer is just for him. For his ears only. If the way you pray is that everybody knows your prayer point. <laughs> I don't have any. I'm just telling you, me. When you are believing for a wife, everybody knows that you ask what you are doing. <laughs> so, you see, if if you're if you're if you're trusting God for, maybe you have certain weakness in your life that you're struggling to deal with. The first recommendation I will give you is to pray about it. Now, wives would teach you not to condemn yourself, would also teach you not to be comfortable in doing the wrong things. Amen. Because if you come to church and you become very comfortable doing the wrong things, then we've not done our job. But we'll still teach you at the same vein to understand that God does not condemn you because of the wrong things. All right? All right? Yeah. Just imagine, imagine if... That woman that was caught in the act of adultery left the feet of Jesus, feeling more comfortable to go and do more things. And Jesus just asked her, did they condemn you? Say no. Then neither do I condemn you. Now, enjoy. She will go again and do another one. After all, she met Jesus and Jesus did not correct her. So that's one. Now, the first thing is that prayer changes you. That's why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that does what? Passes all understanding. Will Before he will change your situation, he will change you. He will change you. So you, you, are, you are worried about the situation and he says, the first thing, we need to deal with this loss of peace. Because if Peace is not there. You will even destroy the things. Oh, have you ever been in a frenzy before? You're looking for something. You can scatter what is even fine. So the first thing he does is that he plants peace in the inside of your heart. Number two. Okay, that's number Number three now. Number three is that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Acts 12, verse 1 to 5. Then we'll look at two more scriptures and then we'll pray. Acts 12, verse 1 to 5. It says, now about that time, 
Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So the reason why he stretched forth his hand was to what? It's just to vex them. Are you listening? Do you understand what the Bible said? It, it, there was no other intention in the guy's heart. He just woke up one morning, said, these people that are growing, let me vex them. So, next verse. It says, and he killed, so, <laughs> for no reason, no, he just decided, I want to vex the church. See, there are certain decisions people take sometimes, you know that the devil has entered them. This was the devil. Hmm? This was the devil. And if you check, everything you do is after an emotion has been triggered. Do you understand? Before you slap somebody, you were first annoyed in your heart. Then you're looking at him. Why is he talking? Look at his head like a fish. Then the devil will not tell you to show him how angry you are. Slap him. So that's what was happening here. So that's why we said, if you want to overcome a temptation, kill the thought. Kill it. Thought produce emotion. So don't fight the emotion. Find the thought. You just wake up and you are angry. Check. What is the thought running in my heart? Because your emotion, you see, I can, I can alter your emotion now. Right? You know how? You can come into this church angry. <laughs> your landlord is just called you and told you that you have two days to leave. So you came into church, you were feeling very sad. You were feeling sad. If I come to you and whisper in your ear, at the end of the service, I want to give you 10 million naira. Do you understand that? One information made you sad. Another information, the way you would dance, <laughs> you would dance anyhow. <laughs> Alright? So the emotion didn't just happen. A thought. Alright? Yeah. So I can alter your thoughts. Sorry, I can alter your emotion. So when you find yourself thinking in a certain way, find out what is responsible for this. Even last year, when I had a situation where I was downtrodden, I knew where the words were coming from. So even whilst I was experiencing, I was telling, I was telling the devil, I said, I can't be here for long. You know why? Because when you know the source of where something is coming from, you can tackle it. You can. So, Verse 2, he, because he wanted to verse the church, the Bible says he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. He didn't even give him silent killing with a sword. Verse 3, and because he saw that he pleased the Jews. Now, remember, first thing that happened was what? He, was, he wanted to vex the church. He says, to vex the church, let me kill their leader. The head of the church was James, so he said, let me kill him. Kill James. Then he now saw, hey, the Jews are happy with me, oh, because everybody who is a Roman ruler always want to do what would give the Jews, make them like them. All right? Yeah, that's why if you read the book of Acts, the Bible tells you that a king wanted held, uh, what's his name, Paul. And after he had spoken with him, he knew that this guy didn't do anything wrong. But because he wanted to be in the Jewish people's good books, they left the guy in prison. So he knew that he wasn't deserving of death, so he didn't kill him. But he didn't release him because he didn't want to offend the people. Now, so when he saw that he pleased the Jews, he took Peter. Now, the reason why he took Peter was to do what? To kill him. So because if killing James gave the Jews joy, if I kill Peter also, more joy. Now, see verse 4. Verse 4. It says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people to kill him. Verse 5. It says, but Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God unto him. Now listen. If they didn't wake up to pray, after Peter, they would have held someone else and killed him. After, they would have held another person. That's how the death will be going on. And reckless believers will be saying, God, where are you? He's in you. Reckless believers will say, God, where are you? He's in you. He 
saying, when will you pray? See how they prayed. The Bible said they prayed when? Without season. You prayed two days. You felt, God, don't answer me. Then you stop praying. So I, I, like I always ask, if you pray three days and you, you stop praying, where will you get help from? <laughs> you prayed and there was no answer. You got angry with God. Now, where are you running to? Nowhere. So stay there. Kill yourself on there. Like Brother Dunsi said, leave me at the altar with my father. Stay there. Stay there. If you die, believing God, that's the best place to die. Not at the feet of men begging. Let it be that the last testament they will speak about me was that he was on the altar praying and God took him. That's an honorable way to die. Listen, prayer changes things. When they prayed, four quadrants of soldiers was not strong enough to stop a man that heaven had said, it's time to leave. And every encounter that you saw that gave birth to Peter coming out, it was the church that mobilized angels. So more than you cry, pray, pray, pray. If there's anything happening around you, you're not comfortable with, pray. Don't complain. Pray. Now there's a way you, you ought to pray. Two scriptures. And we'll pray some more. <laughs> First John 5, verse 14 to 15. Glory to God. First John 5. There's a way to pray. There's a, conf there's, there's a mindset you need to have when you pray. It says, and, no, verse 14 first. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. It says, and this is the confidence. The guy has not prayed yet, but there's a confidence he has. Are you listening? See, this is how to pray. You have not started praying, you are confident. You know how if you have somebody who loves you, if you have a need, you just know if I reach out to the person. The confidence I have is that the person would, would respond. God is saying, this is the way to pray. This guy is saying, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if, if we ever If we ever ask anything in accordance to his will, he what? He heareth us. Verse 15. And we know. And if we know. Now, first thing is that he hears us. Then he says, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that was desired of him. So when you come to the place of prayer, don't come in doubt. All right? Don't come in doubt. Come understanding that the one you are coming to in request, if it is according to his will, he will hear you. And after you have scored the part of his will, you know that because he has heard you, he said, if he has heard me, whatever it is we've asked for, it is done. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that what? So the first thing to have in your heart is that the one you are coming to exists. You see, every attempt to make you believe that God does not exist is an attempt against your ability to receive from him. See, there's nothing the devil does that is not intentional. How will you pray when you don't believe that God is real? When they tell you that God is a fragment of your imagination. How, how then will you pray? So he says that the first thing to do, he says, 
that for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And number two is that he is a rewarder of them who what diligently seek him. So if I pray diligently, I am confident that God hears me. And if he hears me, I know that I have the petition that I've requested of him. Can we be on our feet? Do you know God? Do you know God? Do you know he exists? And do you know he loves you? Now just give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Rana mande ke te ke bosa ya shada barono kabele ta isosa Oh Lord my God how excellent is your name Your name is strength Your name is power a strong tower makes me safe oh Lord my God how excellent is your name your name is strength your name is power a strong tower Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Oh, when we cry out, oh, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Now, in just one minute, in just one minute, in one minute, I don't know the desire in your heart. We just read 1 John 5. It says that the confidence we have in him is that whenever we ask anything in accordance to his will, that he does what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have whatsoever petition we have desired of him. You have one minute to ask from him. Take that one minute, ask from him. Whatever it is you're believing God for, ask from Him. Ask from Him. Ask from Him. Just ask from Him. Be confident in your asking. Be confident in your asking. If you can avoid it, don't speak in tongues. Be very specific with your words. Ask from him. And be confident that when you ask, he hears you. He hears you. He hears you. Be confident that he hears you.
Ask. Ask. Now receive. Receive. Say, I receive. I receive it. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Korabeteko mavo preti sofe ketola tezo nateli. Predike pelo tokora nakarako tezi sozo la parakatana. Rana me na kabranto sefre de ke tizo zonlo korato gabo shetelia. Ramando ke prete sekre tizo korata bele tani asusa. Rata bobo kondo rato sokre telega deno zazale tani. Receive now, receive now with joy. Receive with joy, receive with joy, receive with joy. If you're sick in here, everybody's hand should be down. But if you're sick in here, place your hand on your chest. Any sickness, doctor's sickness, sickness that has been certified medically, the one that is visible for all eyes to see or not. We're going to take that sickness off you and place it back on Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus took your infirmities. You shouldn't, you shouldn't carry them. So if you're sick in your body, just place your right hand on your chest. Online, on site. I take that sickness off you and I place it back on Jesus. Whatever sickness, whatever name it is called, in the name of Jesus, I take it off you now and I place it back on Jesus. I decree from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet, you're healed right now. Whatever is spoiled is replaced now. Whatever has been spoiled, I see the angel of God. I, I see the hand. He's taking it and replacing it now. And what you have now will never go bad. In the name of Jesus. Slap your hands together for the Lord and give the Lord a praise.